If you want to sniff Wi-Fi packets, you're going to need a couple of things. Usually, you'll need a computer, a wireless network adapter, and that can get bulky pretty quickly. If you want to be more subtle, you can actually use an ESP8266 microcontroller to sniff Wi-Fi packets and then later open them in Wireshark. We'll show you how this works on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Sniffing Wi-Fi packets gives you the ability to see information about conversations going on over Wi-Fi nearby, including the devices that are in the room around you and maybe valuable information useful in a penetration test. Unfortunately, it might not be a welcome sight to sit down with a large wireless network adapter sitting out outside of your computer, obviously scanning things because it could tip people off as to what you're doing. Instead, a more subtle option might be a Raspberry Pi in your backpack with maybe a network adapter there. But those two items, depending on your selection, could run up to $50, $60, even $100. A better solution, thanks to a security researcher called Spacehoon, who, uh, by the way, that's Space Chicken if you don't speak German, has found out that these little Wi-Fi connected microcontrollers are able to function as a Wi-Fi sniffer and either send the data back to a computer or log it to a little SD card, as you can see in this little module here. So these two things together are likely to cost you maybe six up to $10, and it's a lot cheaper way to be able to tune into Wi-Fi networks nearby and see what's going on. Now, this is subtle because you can just put it in your pocket and later on pop out this SD card, plug it into a computer and go through the packets on Wireshark and see everything that's going on. Now, in order to do this, you'll need a D1 Mini, an ESP8266 or other sort of microcontroller that uses this uh, general chip. That could include a Node MCU, a D1 Mini, or one of these other types, but an ESP32 will also work. So if you're confused about what these means, uh, you can always take a look at the various models available, but in general, this program should work on just about anything, provided you have a way of storing or sending back the data. So this could be a serial connection via plugging it into USB, or it could be a data logger shield like this one. But either way, make sure that you have some way of sending the data back because this doesn't have enough uh, storage on it to store the data on itself. Once you have these things together, you'll need a computer to program it, which can support Arduino IDE, because that's how we will be setting it up to make sure that everything runs smoothly. When you have everything together, then we can begin. Now to start out on this project, you can go to spacehoon.com and take a look at this glorious chicken floating through space. There are a lot of really interesting projects, which we will go to by clicking here. And if you scroll down, you can see a lot of really interesting ones, but we want the Arduino PCAP. So what this is, is a library for Arduino that allows us to basically write PCAP files either to serial or to a SD card. So we're going to go ahead and go there, which I've already opened here, and take a look at this. So here we go with a, de a description. This works with both the ESP32 and the ESP8266. And I should note that the version that we are doing is a lot cheaper, but also much less accurate and less powerful than going with the ESP32. So we might follow up with a different version on maybe pushing the capabilities of the ESP32, but for now we're going to use the cheaper version just to include more people and make it a lower cost for people to try this out. So this is kind of noted here. Uh, some packets might be malformed, but in general we found this to work pretty well. So looking at the dependencies, we can see that there's a couple things we'll need, and I've tested this myself and you will get errors if you don't go ahead and take care of these first. So before we do anything else, um, I'm going to assume that you've already installed Arduino IDE, and if not, then you just need to go ahead and go to the website for that and install the regular IDE. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and open up Arduino here, and what we'll need to do is make sure we have Arduino Time Library, um, ESP8266 for the board, and then uh, we actually aren't going to be touching the serial this time, so that is going to be what we need. Except, if we want to use the SD card, we'll need to use the SD FAT library, so let's take care of that first. Now in order to install a library, we'll have to first clone or download, and we can just download a zip. And then here, we can do the same with the actual code 
from the Arduino PCAP, so clone or download, download zip, and then we'll take both of these files and drop them into the Arduino folder and then proceed, let me open this, and then proceed to look for the libraries folder. So this is where uh, Arduino IDE will look for various libraries and let's see, there we go. And anything that, oh wow, that's poorly organized. There we go. Uh, and then anything that is in this folder basically will be loaded and include maybe a couple of different examples and the ability to include these libraries in your scripts. So all you'll need to do is take the file you just downloaded, drop the file into this folder and then unzip it. And you should be able to just leave it in here and restart your Arduino IDE in order to make it work. So once you drop everything in here and make sure it's just kind of a folder hanging out in the libraries folder, then we can go ahead and quit Arduino. And then open it again. And then once it opens, we should be able to go to File, Examples, and see a bunch of example sketches that are now included from the libraries that we've installed. Now, some of these are pretty basic and some of them are much more advanced, but the one we're looking for is the Arduino PCAP. And you can see there's a couple variants as well. So we're going to use the PCAP SD and we're doing it for the ESP8266. So that's the one that we'll select and you can see I already have a version open here. Now, once we have it open, it's important to make sure that we have the board installed. So to go ahead and make sure we can click here on the tools menu, then go to the board, boards manager, and the correct board to have in here to make sure that all the various ESP8266 devices are included is the ESP8266 by community. Although you can also see the dauthor version here, which is another one of Spacehoon's projects. So once you have this version installed, then you should be able to select the board that you're using. In my case, I'm using a Wemos D1 Mini, but once you go down here to the ESP8266 modules, you can see a list of all the various modules that are compatible. I happen to have a uh, Node MCU and then the other um, Node MCU version three, which is, it has horrible pin spacing, so don't get that one. But all these other ones will work great. So I recommend that you get maybe one of the D1 minis because they run about $3 on AliExpress. So once you have the correct board selected, then we should be able to hook everything up and push the code. But I wanna go into it a little bit and change a couple of variables in the example so that we can make sure that we're scanning on one channel rather than a bunch of them. So in the original version, uh, it'll say define channel and we can set which channel we want. In this case, I'm going to set channel six and then define the file name ESP8266. In this case, I'm going to make it example and then save interval how many, um, let's say every 30 seconds, it's going to save a new file, channel hopping. In this case, we're going to say false. So what this does is switch from the channel hopping function, which will go to every channel and try to capture traffic from everywhere to staying on one particular channel. So we're just listing in on that one channel. Now you can also set the maximum channel if you are in an area that goes up to 13 or 14, uh, and you can choose the hop interval for how long it takes to go from channel to channel. So there's really a lot of configuration that can go on here. So now we've gone ahead and we've taken the library that's been written for this. We have included it here. So when we have all this uh, uh, include ESP8266 Wi-Fi and then PCAP, SDFAT, all of this should now be included because we've taken the folder, dropped it into our libraries folder and then unzipped it so that it's just there waiting for us when we call it. Now, if you get an error while compiling, it's probably because you forgot to include one of these. And a trick that you might wanna try is go to sketch, include library, and then click on manage libraries. Here, you can try typing in the name of the library that you need. So this should probably be the first thing you check if you get an uh, error while pressing the check button and it tells you that you're missing a library or that it can't be found. Now, 
Once you install all the libraries that you need and you have the board selected, you should be able to just plug in your Arduino, well, your ESP8266 based device into your computer that's running Arduino IDE. And then if you have a uh, SD card shield like we have, because we're going to be logging this to an SD card, you can go ahead and plug in your SD card, well, actually your SD card uh, shield. But first, before you get started with this, you're going to need to actually format the SD card in a particular way. So I'm going to plug this into my computer. And then when I open it up, see if it works. There we go. So I'm going to initialize the disk and then in disk utility, I can see I have a partition called fat. Now before this was formatted in, I think Mac OS journaled, but that won't work. And you'll find that if you have it formatted as any format other than fat, it will not be able to write to the card. So the way to do this is if you click on erase and then select the file format fat MS DOS, and there will be various ways of doing this. So you can look up how to format an SD card in, in uh, MS DOS fat. So here in Mac OS, it's relatively simple. In disk utility, you select it, and then you select uh, erase. And in this case, I'll name it fat, but I'm not gonna erase it because I have a couple examples on here already. All right, so as soon as this is formatted in MS DOS, uh, MS fat, then we can go ahead and eject it, put it into our data logger shield. And then finally, after we have everything connected, we can plug it into our computer and be ready to push the code. Now, this is where you might run into a couple other problems. So if you don't see your, uh, here we go, our serial port show up, as soon as we plug in the ESP8266 device, make sure that you have the necessary driver for whatever device you're using installed. You can refer to a couple of our earlier videos on how to do this if you're getting stuck in this point because there's a couple of different culprits. That might be one, and the other most common one is a bad data cable. So if you can grab a different USB type A to micro USB cable, you might find that that fixes what's wrong. So here I have connected to the device and I can go ahead and press the check button to verify that this code will compile for the particular board that I've selected. Now, you want to make sure to select this early on because if you make a bunch of modifications and then haven't selected which board uh, you're compiling for, you might find that once you change the board, it suddenly doesn't work. So set the board before you go modifying the code because you won't be able to tell if you've done something that doesn't work unless it's with the correct board selected. So here we see it's still compiling the sketch, but as soon as it's done and it checks out, we should be able to press the upload button and watch it upload to our D1 Mini. And there it goes. Now while it's doing this, we can click on Serial Monitor. And this will let us know, oh, well first it'll crash sometimes, but second, it'll let us know if we get a success on mounting the SD card. So now that we've crashed it once, let's go ahead and start it a second time. Please note that if you suddenly start the Serial Monitor in the middle of when you're uploading, that can sometimes cause it to crash. But Looks like it's working this time, so let's take a look at the results. And if you get something illegible, make sure that your baud rate matches what you put in the code. But here we can see the initialization is done. So great, we've opened example.pcap and the sniffer has started. So we're gonna wait about 30 seconds while the sniffer runs and make sure that it has enough time to actually record something. Once we see confirmation that it has actually saved a pcap file, then we'll go ahead and stop it eject it, and then take a look and see what we've captured. There we go. We've saved example.pcap. Now we have, and we're even saving to another one, so we can go ahead and unplug this. And if we were, say, in an office we were doing a pen test on, then this little tiny device will have been monitoring channel 6 is what we programmed it for, and saving all the traffic to the SD card. So I'm going to go ahead and unplug this. Now I'm going to take out the SD card. And let's see what we've captured. Now we can go back to the SD card. Here we see it mounted. And whoa, we have all these great examples to choose from. 
so I'm gonna pick the last one. Be Well, I'm gonna pick one of these actually because I did it earlier and we won't have to blur anything, which our production manager will appreciate. And once we have this open, we can see that, hey, we've actually managed to capture a whole bunch of traffic from this little device. Now we can see there's data, there is deauthentication packets, and we can start to see that although there are some malformed packets, a lot of them are just fine. And because we were staying on the same channel, this very likely helped with uh, making that a reality. Although this one may have been jumping around because I tried this out earlier back when I was at school and had a bunch of different devices that I could just kind of take a look at. So this is a way that you can use a small ESP8266 based device in order to intercept traffic somewhere where you might not want to obviously be sniffing it. It's a lot cheaper than a Raspberry Pi, and it definitely doesn't need the same kind of infrastructure that purchasing a wireless network adapter and making sure the two are compatible would entail. When you're using a microcontroller for Wi-Fi sniffing, there are a couple things you need to consider. By choosing an ESP8266, we've made a couple compromises in terms of the quality and speed of what we'll be able to capture. An ESP32 is a much better option, but it is more expensive. So if you're looking to do this on a kind of economy basis, then the ESP8266 and its limitations might still be the best choice. There's a lot of different ways to do this. And in general, if you don't have a data logger shield, as you can see, this one maybe cost, I think like 250 or so, then you can also run this over serial and have a Python program listening for the results. That way you can save all this data to a Python program, which will save it to a PCAP file, and you'll be able to open that in Wireshark. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any thoughts or feedback on the show, send me a message on Twitter, because I'd love to hear from you. We'll see you next time.